What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we'll be going over everything you need to know about how to use the Beacon Accessory with the Skydio 2, which costs an extra $150. It's sold separately from the drone itself, but in my opinion, it is essential to have to unlock the full potential of the Skydio 2, especially if you'll be using this drone to track you in fast-paced, high-action scenarios, which I'm sure a lot of you purchased this drone to do just that. Now, usually when a drone comes out and it offers tracking features and you need to use a beacon in order to have the drone track you, I feel like it's cumbersome. Like why not build it right into the software to have the camera track you? But the Skydio actually uses a mixture and a blend of both the GPS beacon as well as the software to track its subject, which makes it a lot more reliable. And it also offers a lot more functionality, which we'll get into here in just a couple of minutes. So first, what I want to do is go over the build of the beacon, which is relatively the size of a boosted board remote and is overall really comfy to hold. On the back side of the beacon is our Wi-Fi network ID and password. A speaker at the bottom and also a loop for a strap is located there at the bottom, but this oddly doesn't come with a strap. Nowhere inside of the box was there an included strap to attach to the remote, which is a shame because I think it's an essential piece to have. Like if I dropped the remote skiing, riding my boosted board or doing anything high action, it could pose a huge problem. Now flipping around to the front side, we have a screen at the top that relays information back to the user. Below that is an LED status indicator flanked by two arrow keys or arrow buttons that allow navigation through the menus and the changing of the flight direction. Below that is a blue Skydio logo that is used to power on and take off the drone. It's sort of like the OK button. Below that is a plus and minus button for increasing and decreasing the range. And finally, at the bottom is a red square that's used to pause and stop certain flight modes and is used to land the drone, which I thought at first was a record button, but it's not. The drone actually automatically starts recording for you as soon as you take off. And also, I'm not forgetting about this, on the very bottom is a USB-C port for charging and tethering to the Skydio 2 itself. Now, I've got to say, I really like the overall design of the beacon, especially the buttons on the front. They're rubber buttons and they're really easy to find, so I don't have to look at the beacon when I'm riding around my board. I can just feel for the buttons and change the direction or change the range of the Skydio without having to look at the beacon. Now, just to get you quickly started with your beacon, if you're just getting your Skydio 2, you'll connect the beacon to the drone via the included USB-C cable, and it will instantly pair. Speaking of pairing, the pairing process when using both your phone and the beacon to control the drone is a little bit weird. So if you want to control the drone with the beacon, then you're set after you complete the tethering process with the USB-C cable. But if you want to instead control the Skydio 2 with just your phone, then you have to connect it to the Skydio's wireless. Wi-Fi network. That information can be found underneath of where the battery sits on the drone itself. Now, if you want to use the beacon to control the drone and your phone to see what the drone is seeing, which I often do just to access more settings and features, then you have to connect your phone to the beacon's Wi-Fi and then the beacon connects to the Skydio. This ensures a more stable connection and gives you more range. This process at first was so hard for me to grasp, but after I've flown this drone for a considerable amount of time, it's just become second nature, and it also makes sense to have to connect to the beacon's Wi-Fi network, which can be found on the back of the beacon again, and then the beacon relays all the information to the drone itself. It's a more reliable connection, and it gives you more range. Okay, so now let's get into how we actually use this thing. So once we turn the beacon on with the blue Skydio button in the middle, it will display your remaining battery life, and then we'll sync the GPS, which depending on your connection could take up to 30 seconds or a minute. I mean, it really just depends on where you're at. Once that's completed though, we are ready to launch the drone. First, we'll tap the Skydio button to prime the drone and initialize the autonomy system. And then we will hold it again to begin the launching process. It will count down from three and then lift off, flying up, trying to find the subject that it needs to track. Now I found that I have the best luck when taking off in order to mitigate all of the wandering the Skydio will do to find the correct subject on its own. You want to stand right in front of the camera when you take off so that it can instantly find the subject and so that it won't just follow your GPS signal and it actually tracks you the subject which we'll explain more in just a second here. Now the UI of the beacon is very bare bones with the battery life of the drone being displayed in the top left corner, the GPS signal strength being displayed in the top center, and the tracking status is up there in the top right corner. Below these three icons is a graphic to show what is happening during the current mode that you're in and changes depending on what track 
tracking mode you're using. Now, I want to touch on the tracking icon in the top right corner a little bit more in depth because the information it provides you is incredibly important regarding the status of your drone. There's five different tracking states. In order to see what the drone is doing and what its current status is, you really want to pay attention to what the icon is in the top right corner of the beacon. I think that the easiest way to go about this is to just pull up a screenshot from the beacon's user guide, which shows the different icons that we may encounter. First is an eyeball with a question mark above it, which signifies that the drone has found a subject, but it isn't quite sure if it's the right one. Next is just an eyeball that signifies the Skydio has found the subject automatically, that it has determined it will track, and right here they use the word confident in the user manual, so it's confident that it found the correct subject. Next is explicit visual tracking, which displays a check mark above the eyeball icon, and this is displayed when you use your phone in tandem with the beacon to physically choose the subject that you wanted to track, just like I showed you in this screen recording. This is the highest level of confidence, as the user manual calls it, that the Skydio can have when it's tracking a subject. Next, we have the letters GPS for when the Skydio is simply using the beacon's signal to determine where it should fly, but it won't always be pointing in the right direction as the drone doesn't have a visual on the subject. It's currently searching for that subject. If you saw my first impressions video, you may have noticed that the drone kept up with me as I went through this parking lot, but because it lost a visual of me, the camera was pointed in the complete opposite way, and I now understand why that happened. The final icon that we may encounter is two small dashes, which signifies the drone is not tracking an object, and this is displayed when the drone is being flown manually or when the drone is, say, launching or landing. After the first few flights that I had with the Skydio 2, and after experimenting and studying how the beacon works, I've come to the realization that this drone does use that blend and that mixture of visual tracking and the GPS signal from the GPS beacon to identify, track, and follow a subject. Now, while this gives you the best experience possible, it isn't perfect, but you'll learn as you fly this drone and as it follows you how to manipulate it in order to get the best experience possible. And that all starts with learning those icons in the top right corner and understanding what the drone is doing as it's following you. Now, once the drone has been launched with the beacon, the Skydio 2 enters the last used tracking mode right out of the gate, but to bring it to a hover, we'll press on the red square button at the bottom of the beacon. From this state, the drone doesn't move at all, but will continue to follow the subject selected if it's had time to determine the subject like we just touched on. It even actually actively avoids obstacles, so as I get close to it here underneath it, it moves out of the way, which is really cool to see. It's like there's a bubble around this drone, and it tries to keep things out of that bubble at all times. Now on the remote, we have three different modes to choose from. Fixed track, motion track, and steering. Even though it's a little bit out of order, let's first go over motion track as this is what I used in my first impressions video to follow me around as I rode my boosted board. Using the arrow buttons on the remote, I can tell the drone to follow me from the back, the back right, the right, the front right, directly in front, front left, to the left, back left, and then of course we have back again. If you're standing still, you'll notice that when you're flipping through the modes, the drone might just be sitting there looking at you and not reacting to your inputs, but this is because it doesn't have an idea as to which way you're moving yet. Once you start moving, it will understand which direction it needs to fly in and which angle it needs to go to, and it'll make the necessary adjustments. It's really good at making these adjustments on the fly too, so as you choose which angle you want it to go to, it makes those changes fast. In my time using it on my boosted board, it made the adjustments on a dime even at faster speeds. Now you also have the option of choosing the distance between the drone and the subject by using the plus and minus buttons on the controller to move between three preset distances. Close, medium, and far. Just like the Skydio does when changing angles around a subject, the drone swiftly snaps between these three distances and doesn't waste any time getting into position. The controls feel really responsive and the drone performs really well. Moving on to the next tracking mode, we have fixed track and looking at the screen here, you've got the same option to change what angle the drone flies at with the arrow buttons like you did with motion track, but the drone instead flies at a fixed angle relative to where it's at in space. So right now the drone is in the fixed tracking mode and is following me on my right side but if I switch directions though and begin walking the opposite way it will stay at that fixed angle instead of changing positions entirely to accommodate what angle I want the drone to fly at relative to the direction of the subject unlike motion track which will wait for the subject to move to determine what position it needs to go to the Skydio will move instantly in the fixed tracking mode and you can sort of make it do circles if you keep tapping the arrow at a constant rate playing with these two different tracking modes 
as I used the Skydio 2 to follow me on my boosted board was pretty cool, although I found that I wasn't really using the fixed mode or the fixed tracking mode all that often. Just remember though that between the two, the difference is that with motion tracking, it's always going to change its angle and position relative to which direction that the subject is moving, whereas the fixed angle is always going to keep the same angle no matter which way the subject moves. Now amongst these two tracking modes, we also have steering mode, which lets you manually take control of the drone by using the very limited buttons on the front of the beacon. Once we enter the steering mode, a small diagram will pop up on the screen, and from here we can use the arrow buttons at the top to spin the drone to the left, we can also spin the drone to the right. We can also use the Skydio button to move the drone forward, unfortunately there's no backwards. And we can also use the plus and minus buttons to change the altitude of the drone. The minus button decreases the altitude while the plus button increases the altitude. This is helpful to get the drone to a safe place when you're finished tracking and you want to land it. And yes, even when steering, the obstacle avoidance is active. As you can see, the drone dodges me here when I go to catch the Skydio as it lands. Even though you have manual control of the drone, it really isn't the best manual flying experience. So while theoretically you have 1.5 kilometers or one mile of range, I personally would only recommend using it to position or to land the drone. On top of steering mode, you can also manually select a shooting angle by using the beacon like a wand. So by holding the Skydio button down and moving the remote, you can position the drone exactly where you want in the exact angle you want. But for me, I found this mode not to be very reliable, maybe because I was using it wrong, maybe because I started to run out of light here while I was shooting. Maybe it was just a combination of both, but it definitely wasn't working properly for me And it's something I'm gonna have to do a little bit more experimentation with in the future Another feature that I ended up finding out by accident is the quick droney mode Which can be triggered by double pressing the Skydio button from its current position It will fly up and backwards revealing the area around its subject Just like DJI's drones when utilizing the quick shot feature once the droney is finished the Skydio will come back to tracking the subject So this beacon offers a lot of great functions functionality. It improves on a lot of the core functions available in the Skydio 2 companion application, but there are two major benefits to purchasing this accessory. First of all, you get longer range, and second of all, you get improved tracking. The drone doesn't actually have to see the subject in order to track it, so it can follow a subject without even seeing it. This clip here, for example, was the drone tracking me while I was using the beacon, and I guarantee you that if I was just being tracked using the phone and the camera software, the drone would have lost me. So if you're gonna be doing something that is high action, something that is fast paced, then the beacon is definitely a must have accessory. Overall, this is just such a great accessory to complement the Skydio 2, and as I've said throughout this entire video, it really does allow you to unlock the full potential of this drone. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned everything you need to know about how to control the Skydio 2 with the Beacon accessory, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.